status also affects where you live or what you're exposed to. And if you live in a neighborhood where there's five liquor stores and all you can buy for your snack is beer and potato chips, you're probably not going to eat too many fruits and vegetables. So your environment affects your behaviors, and your behaviors in turn will affect your future life, especially for a child. And your future economic status may be determined by where you live and your access to care as youth. So it's all very messy, but we try to simplify it. Starting with poverty, which in my perspective is probably the single most important underlying determinant of health. And these are data from the LA County Health Survey. You can see that we've had a trend over the last decade of increasing, health, increasing number of households, increasing percentage of households living in poverty. And what's most disturbing is that the households with children have so many more households living in poverty than the households without, without children, which says a lot about our society, I think. Going back to the insurance, and this key and the Health Report covers a lot of different topics. So this presentation, given what we're discussing, I put a lot of data in about health insurance. And if you follow the trend, the green line on the bottom is the uninsured trend among children in LA County. And it's dropped over the last decade from almost 20% uninsured to 7%. So healthy families, healthy kids have made a dent. Things got better over the last decade, and it's very sad to think what's going to happen now, given the last presentation of the way things are going. You can also see that a lot of the decline in the uninsured came in the form of public health insurance, with the red line going up. Um, because Rick is here, Dr. Brown, and gave a little chart showing how close the data are from the LA County Health Survey and the California Health Interview Survey for LA County. Um, we have slightly different numbers for private and public insurance, and we haven't analyzed this yet. It could be because of differences in our samples. But you can see the uninsured level for kids in the county is nearly identical for CHIS and the LA County Health Survey. This graph shows LA County compared to the state in the last decade, looking at kids and Avenue health insurance. And you can see that we still have more uninsured children in LA County than we do in the state overall. The state from CHIS is the red line. And, sorry, opposite, that was the result. LA County is the red line. We're doing better in LA County than we are in California for kids on insurance. At least we have been so far. For adult insurance, it's pretty much a flat line over the last decade. We haven't adjusted much of anything. Our data compared to CHIS data from 2007 surveys are incredibly identical. I was really, uh, we just looked at this yesterday and the, the levels are just um, looking at LA County adults compared to the state, here again the red line is LA County and the yellow line is the state. We tend to have higher rates of uninsured adults in the county compared to the state. That could be because of our high number of undocumented immigrants. Um, we also have a lot of poverty in LA County. And again, with adults uninsurance, nothing's really changed in the last 10 years. Where are the uninsured people in LA County? They are everywhere. We have 22% on average. Um, in the West Spa, the West Side, it's only 12%. And we see the largest concentrations of uninsured in the Metro and the South Spas. Not a big surprise for those of you working in these communities. We also looked at uninsured by federal poverty level. Again, this won't be a surprise to anybody in this room. The lower income you are, the less likely you are to have health insurance. But it's pretty dramatic. You know, working poor and the people at the federal poverty level, very high levels of uninsurance. For the kids, it's, it's definitely a lot lower, but we still are not getting to 10% of children living under federal poverty level. These are the most vulnerable children, and we're still leaving 10% of them without health insurance. And again, uh, more disparities are race ethnicity. A one third of Latino adults in the county are uninsured and almost 20% of African-American adults. There's been a lot of talk in the last couple of years about the importance of a medical home. That it's not only having health insurance, but having a place where people can go, where they have a doctor they can see, or at least clinic staff. They're familiar with their care and know what's going on. For all the talk of a medical home, we've made no progress in people in LA County having a regular source of care. So you can see the red line is adults. We've gone from 18% to 19% since 1999. And for kids, we've made a little bit 
some improvement down to 7.4% from 8.2%. But more work to do in this area as well. Of course, not having a revenue source of care also varies by household income. The higher income people in the county, 300% and above, who, as our um, presentation earlier showed us, are also struggling to pay for their health insurance. Only 10% of them don't have a regular source of care, compared to 29% of those in the lowest income category. And regular source of care also varies by race and ethnicity. Latinos, again, are most vulnerable. Over a quarter of them don't have a regular source of care. And the Asian Pacific Islanders, one fifth, report not having a regular source of health care. Public health is also working a lot on the health environment. This falls into the realm of looking at health in a very broad perspective. It's not just going to the doctor, it's not just getting your blood pressure checked and taking your pills, but it's where you live, what you do, what you eat, how much you exercise, and all that stuff. And how safe your neighborhood is. Uh, for the last decade, we've asked people in LA County if they perceive their neighborhood to be safe from crime. And these statistics have not budged in the last 10 years either. The problem is South LA. Not a surprise, but really, something's got to be done about this. I've had a, a very vulnerable community here. Looking at access for, kid, for kids to a park or playground or other safe place to play. Parents in LA County, about 80% of them, said that yes, my child has a, a safe place to play near the house. It is lower in the South Spa. That's uh, not a pointer, but. Um, 63% in the South Spa and 70% in the Metro Spa. Again, these two areas tend to be the most vulnerable in a lot of the health indicators we look at. And what these children are doing for their physical activity, but they should be getting 60 minutes a day, I'm not sure. We also looked at physical activity, safe places to be physically active by health district. We analyze a lot of our data we analyze all our data at the health district level, and we try to do smaller communities as well when it's feasible. And you can see on this map, the darker pink color, the deepest pink, are the areas that have the lowest percent of people saying they're safe places for them to be active. But this is adults speaking of their own ability to be active in their communities. So we have the Compton Health District and the South Health District. Again, I'm not a surprise if you're following life in LA that these people have a hard time finding a safe place to, to exercise. But there's other communities that are um, doing better, and it's promising the whole um, Upper Valley is doing well, and Glendale is doing very well, but many areas for improvement. Nutrition. Um, we're realizing more and more that people can't eat healthy as much as we tell them 10 times you have to eat five fruits and vegetables a day. If they have nowhere to purchase them, they're not going to be able to eat more healthy. So, in the 2007 survey, we asked people about the quality of fruits and vegetables where they shopped, if they were able to access high quality uh, produce. And across the board, it's about 36%. Only on the west side, a spa, do people, more than half the people say they have access to very high quality fruits and vegetables. And this correlates directly with what they report they eat. So the people who have the most access to buying the high quality produce are more likely to eat more of it. A little bit of data on the outcomes. I think you all know we have an obesity problem. Uh, we're still getting fatter for children. It seems to have leveled off in the last couple of years, but our adult obesity rate continues to climb. And along with this, our diabetes rate continues to climb. We're now almost 29% diabetic.